Welcome to the worst nightmare of all. Reality. Explore the lesser-known stories of our unknown world. Join the pursuit of the paranormal with Ash and Greg. Good evening, Ash. How are you? Evening, Greg. I'm exhausted. I bet I bet you are. I bet you are. So we're recording this on Sunday the 10th of October. Yeah. And it's the evening of Sunday the 10th. And you're knackered because yesterday was the UFO identified Minicon. Yeah. How did it, it go? It was good. It went really, really well. We had a packed house. Yeah. We had four amazing speakers. Everyone loved it. The feedback we've had all today and last night was just good. Um, everyone, good vibe. Everyone's having fun. Everyone's chatting, having a drink, having some food. Um, we put we put in like half an hour breaks between speakers, and we had like an hour long dinner break. Yeah, and I said like we had like the breaks. It wasn't just hammering the speakers all the time, gave people a chance to talk and just socialize because it's like the first conference. I think the first big conference that's gone on, yeah, uh, post lockdown. So I think a lot of people haven't seen each other for a couple of years. We've seen each other for the first time like there yesterday. People come from all over the UK. They come from down south. People come from Wales, uh, from the northeast, traveling three or four hours to get there. And um, so yeah, and again, a lot of people have seen old friends for the first time in a couple of years. So it's good to just good vibe going on. It's uh, it went well. And yeah, just <laughs> it's been two months of just nonstop organized it now just today it's just been just chilling out relaxing and before we start planning the next one so i've seen loads of comments on facebook um about the conference as well people who've attended and said it was brilliant so that's that's really good yeah really well we had very few hiccups the the like the main concerns were just the, the sound and the yeah the audio visual side of things that put it it works. We uh, had some good, had some good help setting us up. Uh, yeah, like I say, we have some amazing speakers there. Some like well-known people from the world of ufology. So it's just a, a very busy day. Didn't get that much chance to talk to the people myself since I was running around all day. But uh, we've got some moments in there to talk to people. So it is. Uh, we get some pictures with them. We get some book signs. So it's it's a good day. Brilliant, brilliant. So as I'm put you off doing it again then. No, we are already planning the next events for the next Amazing. couple of months and into next year. So keep that's really good. Field. And it was sold out as well, well in advance, which is yeah. great. Yeah, full houses, and it would and it didn't even feel like it was, it was too busy. It was like probably the perfect amount, and I think everyone was just super friendly and relaxed, and it's just a good, awesome. a good day. Awesome, that's really good. That's really good. Well done. And I know you have been putting the, the time into getting that. Yeah, Abby, Abby, Natalie, and myself. We just I can't do it without them too. Just yeah, reining in some of my some of my bigger ideas. <laughs> so, yeah, just too much. But uh, yeah, they've all, they both worked nonstop for the past couple of months to get it all. And and on the day yesterday, we didn't stop. Or or I had a couple of people helping up as well. Didn't stop all day to make sure it ran smoothly and the guests were happy, which is the main thing. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Awesome. Great job. Great job. And we've been busy with the podcast as well, uh, fitting that in. Um, so we have appeared in Paranormality magazine on, on the front, front cover. on the front cover. On the yeah. front cover. Uh, and an interview in it um, off the back of a podcast interview that we did as guests uh, for Paranormal or What podcast with Michaela Ford. Yeah, so much sure check is, that out. Yeah, so that's on all their podcast providers. We put the links up on um Facebook and Instagram. And just on that note, so on our bio on Instagram and on our website link on Facebook is our link tree, which is something I'd never even heard of, but it allows us to put multiple links just in one link. So anytime we 
have any magazine or guest podcasting we can put the link up to the podcast on there as well so you can check it out from there so yeah that's been a a busy a busy week and yeah it's we great, faith- great fun chatting to Michaela <clears throat> yeah definitely different to be the other side of the microphone uh, yeah. as it were and to be asked questions and uh it's a different type of thinking when you when you think mm. of the answers rather than think of the questions yeah definitely definitely um plus we also did a facebook live on tuesday evening for everybody that joined us there was we had loads of questions and we had um a guy come on and join us halfway through as well and we chatted for an hour with him so that that was really cool he had some strange fascinating mm. tales from his his work really yeah so that was that was awesome as well so what we've done is because that was two and a quarter hours long we've we've split it down into two podcast episodes so this week's episode that we're gonna that's gonna come on on this one is the first hour or just over an hour of the q and a so people who didn't get the opportunity to to watch at the time can have a listen and we cover quite a range because it was like just random questions from people watching mm. just cover quite a bit of different aspects of the uh yeah, we, we even covered ley lines and all sorts of stuff, which was uh, interesting. Um, it's not something... We've we've touched on ley lines a few times on episodes around um, sort of when there's been significant sort of paranormal or UFO-related type things. So it's good to, to have a chat. And like you say, people just fire questions at us and we attempt to put our knowledge to to good use like finding out about snakes and ladders so. yes <laughs> something new you might learn definitely in this episode. yeah so we covered off yeah snakes and ladders ley lines all sorts of stuff all sorts of stuff so that that was really good so without further ado we'll go straight into that that episode of um facebook live so that's the first hour and then next week we'll play the second hour where we have a conversation with tom so yeah sit back enjoy this episode uh and as always let us know what you think yeah so before we we press play uh next sunday which is the 17th or this sunday depending when you listen to this episode um will be the paranormality podcast awards that we have been nominated in the UFO and alien category, which yeah, thanks for everyone that's uh, well, it so yeah, next time you hear from us, we could be the winners, we could be award winning podcasters. <laughs> we could be, we could be, you never know. Uh, strange things have happened if we do win, but mm-hmm. you can watch it live on YouTube on the panel yes. Arts magazine's YouTube. We put the link on the social media on Sunday, yep. But if we do win. Mm-hmm. I'm saying this for the first time. We'll jump on Facebook Live at that, at that just after we give our acceptance speech, and then okay, we'll we'll I don't know what time it'll be. <laughs> <laughs> Two o'clock in the morning. But well, I'll jump on Facebook Live. <laughs> I'll, I I I'll, I'll be on. I'll be on. I'll set my alarm to wake up. Um, because... It is in America. So I think the times a bit. Yeah. yeah so, well, we, we're going to have to give our acceptance speech, Ash. Yeah, we're so yeah, we'll going to have to be awake anyway. Yeah, yeah. So if you win, we'll jump on Facebook Live and have a little yeah, celebration. Yeah. We'll get the champagne and ice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And like we say, we're, we're up against some big podcast names, some of whom have been doing it for a lot longer than us. So just to be nominated has been yeah. amazing. Uh, and I'd, I'm not even sure how we got nominated, but we did. And yeah super excited anyway um so check us out in paranormality magazine where we're on the front cover and it's their award show um next sunday and like i said we'll put the we'll put the links up to the youtube channel and and the live stream so yeah check us out guys and maybe we might see you at two o'clock in the morning (laughs) getting hammered 
<laughs> I'm going to get sick on Monday. Well. <laughs> I can't because my manager listens to this. <laughs> I'll have to still go in as. <laughs> We just, had, we just had a video call with uh, the girls in the UFO Identified uh, team. And Abby has commented, um, the straightness continues, which pretty much sums up the kind of weird, weird video call, like just, just before I jumped on it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to try to see the uh, video. Uh, but yeah, we would Three of us on the video call, and we kept getting some weird, weird noises. Only two of us could hear, mm-hmm. and it sounded like voices talking. It sounded like there's footsteps we could hear. Okay. Um, Abigail's light was flashing. There was a light outside, not as window that she couldn't see physically through the window. Mm-hmm. Okay. But on the monitor, we could see it. Yeah. And that's like a flashing light. And there's kept being flashes across my screen. So it's just a really weird. And this these this noise, this voices just kept coming across proper loud. Like I had to take my earphones out at okay. one point because it's just loud, like proper at first it sounded like a helicopter, like helicopter noise. Like yeah. the, the blades were like proper loud in my ear. Um so it was really weird. I recorded it, it was able to set up my computer to start recording the video and the audio. So uh when, when I finish, I'm going to have a look back through the footage and see if we can hear or see anything and try and isolate whatever yeah. was being said by this weird voice. That it, was, it was loud for two of us, but then Natalie could either didn't hear anything or it was very, very quiet. Whereas me and Abby, it's like, you know, I take headphones off, it was that loud. Like, you know how it is? It's, how old? And we're trying to like, organise a conference on Saturday. <laughs> it's just noises and <laughs> proper distracting as well. Oh wow, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what. Yeah, definitely. What that was then. I hope it's not anything left over from our conversation with Bill the other night. Um, mm. <laughs> it might well be, but I know that when we've we've had the group calls with um, your UFO group, that there's always been some strange stuff, and I know Abby's had loads of strange stuff in her how's happened whilst we've been having conversations yeah. in the group so you're a few months in now into your your new place and i know we touched on it the other day have you had any more experiences anything strange happen sadly not um i think the only one that i mentioned on, on one of the episodes was the bathroom door shaking while I was in there, like someone okay, tried to come yeah. in, um, but like no one was there. My partner wasn't there. He just like it's like someone had tried to come in the door, but he, he was locked over. Um, so if, if, it, if the lock wasn't on, I don't know what would happen. But the lock was on. <laughs> um, it sounded like someone was trying to come in the door. Um, oh, wow. It's just really weird at the time. But apart from that, that's the only thing that's happened since the first couple of things that when we first moved in, uh, noises and. Um, what happened with that light sort of I'm pointing but I don't oh, know yeah, what I'm pointing uh, sort of up there this way yeah, yeah, yeah. Well Depend, depends yeah am I pointing at the same corner I don't know yes no yeah so when That's I do that I'm pointing yeah that, that corner <laughs> <laughs> yeah we had yeah, some lights flashing light yeah oh yeah I can see it on the other screen now because it's, it's a mirror image of Facebook as to me <laughs> It's too confusing at my age. So no, 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 sort of more strange stuff happening in the. No, but my my sister in law, um, she wants to come on Halloween because the bait. I mean, like I said, so we um, house is well over a hundred years old, and there's a big basement. Okay. And when you go into the basement, it's huge. Like there must be a dozen different rooms in there. Like, it looks like there used to be kitchens in there and stuff. So we think it possibly, like. Um, quarters for like the mm-hmm. workers in the house or the yeah. maids or whoever the butlers or whatever the house was in the past. It looks like a like like living quarters or like kitchen quarters down there. There's like space where like you could tell it used to be like a old stove or oven. There's so we'll take like 
built in tables into the actual building. And she wants to do a seance down there on Halloween. Nice. So, um, yeah, so we're going to do that. I'm going to set up the uh, cameras and the uh, voice recorders and try. I've never done nice. a seance before, so. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think, I've never done a seance before, actually. Well, I'd rather do, like, like EVP type stuff, but she wants to do a seance, so. Let's do a sound. Let's try something have, different. Yeah, definitely. Have you so on seances? Have you watched the um, episode? I can't even think of his name now. The magician guy, Darren, Darren Brown, when he done about a seance. Have you I seen that episode? Think I've. I've watched most of this stuff. Hmm, that's interesting as well. Where he, he, people are. Uh, I believe in something's happening, and to be fair, it looks really bloody real on the TV. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I've done all sorts of things, sort of like that, but I've never done a séance. So, because that week, I'm actually going to um, with the the Windrush Paranormal Group. We're going to the Ancient Ramin <laughs> earlier on that week. So spooky, oh, spooky kind of week. So. Well, yeah, Halloween, really it, so. yeah, 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 definitely looking forward to that. So, welcome along, Trudy. Uh, Abby's saying that Google browsers not allowing this Facebook, but other browsers are now. Um, so I don't know what, what that's all about because we haven't tried Zoom out before on broadcasting live. I think that's probably what it is. I don't know why that would be any different. I'm working on uh, my computer, that's and uh, I use Opera. Which working on my phone. Okay. Uh, welcome along, Trudy, as well. Trudy is part of the paranormal group that I'm in. So um, we are definitely going up to the, or yeah, to the Ram Inn um, in a couple of weeks. That is super exciting. Um, and incidentally, <clears throat> in the local, on the, on the route there, because I saw it last time, I was driving down. Sorry to go slightly off topic, but we have to go through a village called Lechlade, which is near us. Um, really nice place. And we're driving past a new build. And I said to my wife, I said, right, hold up, reverse. So we, uh, I said, right, we need to reverse. So we reversed up. And there is a road name. That's my middle name and my surname. And like, so my my surname, Tomlinson, is spelled T-H and it's, for Tomlinson and it's quite an unusual way of spelling it not most quite a lot of people are T-O-M yeah. <clears throat> so this and my middle name is Scott and went past this road and it was Scott Tomlinson of a road or or drive it's a weird name for yeah I was just like where that what what the bloody hell was that all about so that was that was my start of weirdness on the way to the ancient ram in last time and uh, yeah, the, yeah it's a great place it, it, ley lines intersect underneath it um allegedly one of the most haunted places in the uk so yeah really looking forward to that and i know that the guys are as well so what do you think ley lines are wow <clears throat> i don't know now <laughs> so we've spoken and they've popped up many times I suppose that's a good place to start, actually, with some weird stuff. So I think ley lines are these energy lines, um, invisible energy lines that crisscross the world. So we, I know when we've spoken to people, things seem to happen around ley lines. We spoke to John Edmonds at Stardust Ranch, and he said his property is on the ley line. I think he said Skinwalker Ranch is on the ley line, that particular. Same one, yeah. Yeah. And another place was all three of them on the same ley line. So that that's kind of what I've got from all the stuff we've been talking about. What do you what do you think it is? Similar type thing or Yeah, I think I mean it goes back, like say, hundreds, what thousands of years they've built things on ley lines, like like when you go down to Glass to be taught, that's the line with like Stone Engine, and Ainsbury and they place it all like on the same line as yeah as you look at it so i mean i don't know it's, i think there's something definitely something to it i think they are definitely there a lot of people say like, there's just it's nothing there's no such thing but i think there's something there i think there's too much 
and it's all around yeah. the world that it's happening. It's like actually where intersections happen, where there's a number crossing each other. It seems to be areas where there's high amounts of where stuff like the ancient ram in. There's like a lot of them intersecting underneath there, and lots of weird stuff. Weird stuff happens. So <laughs> I don't know. What do you guys think in the uh, comments? What are your thoughts on ley lines? Do they, do they exist? Is one. That is the thing. I mean, <clears throat> if they're invisible, how do we even know they exist? A lot's made about ley lines and the fact that um, they they have these sort of energies, but who knows? I know with dowsing rods, they're they're supposed to help find and establish ley lines. So um, I will be taking my dowsing rods to the ram in as well. So I'm looking forward to. Sorry, while I just drink some red wine. I've got one day left of a holiday from work, and I um, I thought I'd, uh, I'd that's about as much as I've drunk this year. To be fair, <laughs> I don't drink. Um, so yeah, um, ley lines definitely an interesting thing. They've cropped up a couple of times, so it's uh, it's an interesting discussion, and it's something I don't. So Thomas. John Goodfellow has just commented, ley lines are lines that crisscross the globe, like latitudinal and longitudinal lines that are dotted with monuments and natural landforms and carry along with them rivers of supernatural energy. Along these lines, at places they intersect, there are pockets of concentrated energy that can be harnessed by certain individuals. Cool. Nice to meet you. Hello, Tom, by the way. Yeah, thanks for joining us. I can't see the comments. I'm looking, but it's not. So I've 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 got got the screen split. <laughs> so if I'm looking slightly to the side of the the camera, you can look down my phone, yeah. but there's no comments up there yet. But I did get a question from Colin in the UFO group, yeah. and I asked you. So I I didn't know the answer. I didn't know anything about it. So I've before we came on, because he asked this earlier, I looked into into it. I didn't know. I, I didn't know the answer. Uh, basically, do you know the meaning behind snakes and ladders? No. No. That's why. Is, is it going to be something? So I'm taking a punt here. Yeah. Is it something to do with the plague and the black death? Because everything else seems to be you know, like Ring of Ring of Roses is all about the plague. Uh, that nursery rhymes so people are dropping when they're sneezing and stuff like that um but i don't know no so i actually it wasn't easy to find anything so i just put in meaning behind snakes and ladders and nothing really came up uh, so i do a big bit of dig, digging and there's an article on india times um from 2013 it's like the only thing i could really find that's a bit more behind the actual meaning behind the game rather than just talking about the game. Yeah. And um, basically this uh, academic scholar who's been studied the game and um, other, how games are used to propagate religious beliefs okay. to the masses. And what he found with Snakes and Ladders is that they represent a universe that refines the elements of religion into like, infotainment. So basically getting religion getting out to the masses and apparently different religions have different versions of snakes and ladders like have their own version of it and each box so each step like some have like 50 steps and up to 100 mm -hmm. each space um represents a different stage in life or a virtue or a vice wow. and if you do wrong you get bitten by a snake and you come so down Okay. If you do good, you'll move up in life. And like the aim is to reach the higher universe, the higher plane, whatever that is for that particular uh, religion. So okay. apparently that's um, the, the meaning behind the game. I'm not sure if that's what Colin asked the question. That's the information that he has. Yeah. But I did a bit of digging. This was, that's what I could find. So I, I didn't have any idea what... I never really thought about it, but um, it kind of makes sense. Uh, like the, the ladder is omnipresent in almost all religions as the symbol of ascent and the snake as the embodiment of evil. 
which is true in Christianity, but uh, it's not that bit. Yeah, um, Thomas has put the ladders represented virtues such as generosity, faith, humility, while snakes represented vices such as lust, anger, murder, and theft. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah, some of, some of, he asked me. I saw the question. I was like, "Well, I'll find out before I ask Greg, so I can." I've got some sort <laughs> of answer. <laughs> yeah, because I'm not going to know. <laughs> but <clears throat> going back to the ley lines quickly. Just very quickly. So Trudy's put, she wonders whether our ancient ancestors could fill ley lines uh, as they built lots of monoliths on them and churches. So that's it, yeah. So somewhere along the line, we've um, they've either been able to harness them. Uh, I suppose maybe nowadays, is that much of our own created electricity and all this stuff that yeah. maybe we just can't sense ourselves because we're, there's too much, too many radio waves, mm. radio lengths that's all around us all the time, all different frequencies that we can, from all the radios, TV signals, Wi-Fi signals, we just don't, we can't. So maybe, like, like because they didn't have anything around them like that, they were able to find yeah. that frequency because it was different to everywhere else, whereas now everywhere's got some sort of frequency. Yeah. You can't that's, then yeah. identify, so... Yeah, it could be. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. That's a good point. Everybody's, yeah, desensitized to a lot of stuff now, I suppose. So. Yeah, because yeah. I believe, and I've, um, it's gone back years when I've been reading about this, that humans can actually locate north naturally. Okay. Uh, apparently, there's something in your nose. Okay. Me on it, so I'm thinking back like a long time now when I was reading about this, and when I thought about it, it kind of made sense at the time. I, in my head, when I was younger, I was like, oh, I can actually feel it, but I don't know if I could or not. <laughs> but apparently, if you like focus, there's something in your nose or somewhere that can find north, okay. and, you can, and you find it, and you can find it. Like I said, I'm I like to look into that again because I just it doesn't randomly fall about it then. We've not thought about it for a long time, but humans can naturally find north with something in the no in the nose. If anyone knows anything about that, hey, nose. Um, <laughs> <laughs> here was a comment. Thomas, you seem quite um, good for the answers. Have a have a dig into that for me. Um, yeah, it's randomly remembered that. Don't know why. So we've got some <clears throat> some more here, some questions. So Trudy has, meant, has asked, have you been in a stone circle before? If you have, did you feel different? Yes and yes. She has. Um, I've been in a crop circle and felt different. But I've... So where we are, where I live in Whitney... In Oxfordshire, there is a a place called the Devil's Coits. I wouldn't even Dev be able to spell Dev that. Devil's but what? Coits. Coits. I think it's Q U O I T S or something. Coits. It's like a stone circle, basically. And they've rebuilt this stone circle and put the stones there. Um, and we, as a group, we went out there not long ago, and. Um, so I had the dowsing rods and I went through, There's I don't know how many stones it was, about 30 stones in a big circle. It may not have been 30. And I, I went through between two stones with the dowsing rods. As I got to the, the point, sort of the invisible line, the dowsing rods crossed. So um, I got Glyn one of the guys from the group to try it as well same thing happened with him so we all sort of lined up and had a had a go at this and i went through the center bit between each particular one to see if it crossed over and it did so i've not been to so we we we're, we're on the border of wiltshire which is quite a spiritual county wiltshire with Stonehenge not far away and loads of UFOs and crop circles uh, all over Wiltshire. Um, we're just on the border of Wiltshire. And um, so I've not actually been to a stone circle myself, apart from this particular one. 
and that was strange but I didn't personally I didn't feel any different in there but I know some of the others in the group could feel stuff on the, the stones themselves almost like there was an electricity or static uh, Trudy could probably explain that better um, so uh, I'm just trying to scroll back through the comments because I'm just losing a few of them now. Um, yeah, on, on some circles, we have been to quite a few. Uh, I live not too far from the Lake District, uh -huh. and there's lots of stone circles up there. Um, we've been to yeah, ten maybe different stone circles. Okay, um, that are up around the Lake District on the side and on, on the way. And again, up towards Carlisle in Scotland, there's a few dotted about. And I think my favourite up there, I think it's called something like Big Meg and her little sisters. Okay. Something like that. It's like one big stone and then a circle of little stones. And definitely there felt something. Um, it just felt, like I say, it just feels different. It feels, you can't really explain the feeling. It's like there is a bit of, I don't know. It's hard to explain. Okay. But you do feel like different. I'm only like, I found it more when I was in the middle of the circle rather than actually at the stones themselves. So when I was in the middle yeah. of the circle. Um, and we actually, got, <laughs> we actually got attacked by cows at that stone circle. Um, attacked by cows? It's literally, I got a picture of me, my partner Jamie. Um, he's a cow eating t shirt. <laughs> I just get caught up in the head. <laughs> I let him like I let the cow lights up my hand and stuff, and he just does the cow just came from nowhere, like sort of walked through this field. It was a lot of the same circles we go to. It's literally in the middle of the farmer's field, nowhere near roads. You got like park up at a little country road, climb over the fence, and then walk through farmer's fields and sheep poo and everything to get to. It's literally just like literally in the middle of the field. A lot of them are farmer's fields. Uh, so there's that one. I think it's my favourite one. And then there's another one at the top of the hill cat, or what it's called, which is probably the most well-known one. Um, and again, that's probably, I mean, some of them I've not really felt anything, but a couple up in the Lake District. Um, and then I always make a point, when, whenever I go somewhere new, I have a look to see what's near. Yeah. Either on the way or there, and I'll stop and we'll go visit the Stone Circle and take pictures and just chill out there for a bit. It's just, it's just really relaxing as well, just being there, just... Yeah. Big new stones have been here for some of them for thousands of years or however long they've been there for. And yeah. Trying to think, like, why are they here? Who put them here and stuff? And it's just cool just uh, being there. So, why why are st cir why are stones in circles? I don't know. I don't know if it's to do with the stars or um, they're representing different things. I, I don't mean, it's not something I've really done. It's actually looking to like, each one. Mm too much apart from finding out where they are and how to get there i'm not really looking to these different ones too much if, um, so there's this site you can go on and like they literally describe like how to get there and it'd be this is the nearest parking space they've got to walk half mile that yeah. way and then turn onto this dirt path and go half mile that way um sometimes the farmers don't like being on there and uh, some of them don't mind you and you should just not make a mess or anything and i've been stonehenge yeah, been staying uh, Paid the 20 quid, however much it is to. <laughs> been there thousands of years, free for everyone. I was like, oh no, 20 <laughs> quid to get in, not allowed to get near them either. You have to be a few meters away from, from that footpath. Ridiculous. And, but I definitely felt some of it Stonehenge. When we're walking up the path, like get off like, the bus and then walking up towards it, hmm. on that on that path, we felt something. Walking around it, you have like the full circle, didn't really feel much, but on that path leading up to it, felt like some like say some sort of electric charge or something okay and it's so funny you should say that because trudy's put the when we were in that stone circle devil's coits and uh tom i'm just trying to find a comment i don't know why it's not loading up comments um i can only see a certain amount of comments um but trudy's put down there it was like a heartbeat vibration coming through the stones i couldn't i couldn't feel it myself but i know several of the group did on separate stones and these stones are huge some of them were like well i'm six foot one and these were bigger than me um 
and yeah it was yeah it was like the first time we'd we'd been out there but yeah the the, the circle bit is fascinates me stonehenge is circular isn't it yeah. and that's all to do with it lines up with like the, the equinox and yeah. uh solstice summer solstice and the winter solstice which i find incredible anyway that they could line them up uh, as perfectly as on particular days i don't know what that's all about we, we went um, to one um i think it was in north yorkshire because we went to scarborough and there's a few on there as well. And then there's one on the way back from Scarborough towards the northwest. It must be in Yorkshire somewhere. And it's a standing stone rather than a stone circle. Yeah. It's, in a, it's in a churchyard. And it's the tallest standing stone in the UK. Okay. Um, so it's like proper tall. And there's on the back of it, it's believed to be a dinosaur's footprint. On okay. The, on the back of back of this, this stone. Uh, it's like a bit of legend that there's this like outline or fossil of a, something of yeah. a, a dinosaurs uh, footprint on the back of the stone um, it's obviously something to say it's just not it's just nothing but yeah could be, could be really um, really old stone yeah it could be a really old stone um, I'm just trying. I'm just trying to go back for the comments. Apologies to people commenting on that. I'm trying to. It'll only let me see four comments at a time, and as soon as the next person comments, the bottom one drops off. So I, uh, oh wait, C thread. Here we go. Right here we go. I've got it now. No, I haven't. Abigail said churches were primarily built where yew trees were. Where yew trees were. Yeah. That's okay. what you've heard before. No, it isn't. No. It isn't. Uh, Trudy's put down that they have sky watches. That, so where I am, there's a place called the Roll Wright Stones, which is near to me as well, which is a circle of stones. And they have sky watches there, apparently, according to Trudy. Gotta um, do that. Yeah, you have to come down. As I say, we're cl very close. I can almost, I, if I drive five minutes, I can see um, the White Horse Hill at Uffington. Um, and if anybody has played, I can't remember what game it is, on Xbox, probably on PS4 as well, Uffington White Horse is on there as a, uh, as a place you can go and drive to, some driving game. It's a little fact there. But um, that is... I've seen two crop circles there um, and that I've been into both of those crop circles and they were weird. One of them was the jellyfish one, which we've talked about before. Yeah. Um, and that was behind um, the white horse hill. So it was just at the back of it. Um, and then in front of it, there's um, there was a, a crop circle as well. And I went in there, I took loads of photos of the way the, um, the crops had bent. And they were at right angles, but the actual like nodules or nodes, it they they weren't. It looked like they were fused that way. So that was pretty weird. Yeah. Um, and I did get a weird feeling in the the um, the jellyfish one. But um, let's have a... Neil says, how many times? Can you get bitten by a metaphorical snake before you are completely stuffed? Asking, <laughs> asking for a friend. <laughs> well, I reckon I've probably been bitten quite a few times. So, <laughs> so it's I'm, like Neil might be going back into another life before he can uh, get yeah. to the next level of life. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about it, Neil. Just crack on doing what you're doing. Probably not much you can do now. <laughs> no, one. The next one actually is an interesting one. Uh, I can see all the comments now. I've sussed it out. Um, so Thomas has put, do you guys think there is a connection between other legends, myths, and the paranormal? So this is something that we talk about quite a lot on the podcasts, the connection between the paranormal and UFOs and cryptids and all manner of <laughs> strange things. Um, and I, I think there is. There seems to be. What do you think, Ash? Um, something that we spoke about in our very first episode 
uh, was the link between Bigfoot mm. or other Bigfoot-like creatures and UFOs. Um, yeah. that's, that's just one aspect. Yeah, and I joined my research the episode, which was Yowie. God, I've seen that since a long time ago. That nearly that first <laughs> episode, wow. Um, was that up to 20% of Bigfoot or Yowie sightings were accompanied by a lights in the sky or UFO mm-hmm. incident at the same time in the same area? Yep. Um, and again, like some of the some of the stories that we told on that episode, like one from a couple hundred years ago, was where they reported seeing ape apes coming out of a moon shaped craft in the sky, which like, I just like with the sound like a UFO mm-hmm. dropping off Bigfoot yeah. or something. I don't know. Uh, but it's definitely something I think like like areas like like Sardis Ranch and other areas around the world where you have all different things happening. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't seem like it's unbelievable to have these things happening. Because like if someone says I saw a UFO, okay, fair enough. And then someone says, I saw a UFO, oh and then we had ghosts, and we had a big foot in the garden, and we had so if you are if you like do one, I'm not believe in this crap, but yeah. I think, yeah, I think there's no reason why not. And then go back to the what when we talk about what they actually are, what are UFOs, what are aliens, what are spirits? As we talked about on the, this week's episode with Bill from mm-hmm. Connecticut, um, over there on a different dimension to us, um, and if they're all on a different dimension, mm-hmm. and they're just making themselves visible when they want to make themselves visible to us. Yeah then it would explain a hell of a lot of... It would also explain why we don't see Bigfoot much. So in between sightings, obviously there's there's sort of no real... There's there's evidence that something was there, but it's never really spotted. It's a very elusive creature. And I know Ben... Um, that we we speak to from 401 files he goes out with the intention of trying to to locate these these creatures um and that's like when people say oh uk is just far there's not enough land mm-hmm. um maybe it's got a whole dimension well yeah to be if there's an alternate version of the uk that they're living on and they just from time to time cross over into ours yeah and i say they can easily come and go and there is a lot of there's a lot more land in the UK than people think yeah there is um, especially up in Scotland there's a lot yeah. of uninhabited areas as well in the UK yeah uh, protected areas oh I mean I I recently went to just over the border to Wales I walked off with the dogs and we walked up a road and I didn't see any for anybody for about an hour and I, that was on a road so you only have to walk off that road into a wood, yeah. and potentially there's stuff there that you. Be wild chihuahuas in there, <laughs> yeah. or, or anything. <laughs> it could be a wild chihuahua. I still can't believe that. That's crazy. So we've had another question. Have we ever played any paranormal games such as Midnight Man? Paranormal games, nope. like yeah, Midnight Man. There'd be like. Um, so Midnight Man, there's, they made a film about that, and uh, it's some it's something to do with. Um, I'm not even going to do any justice. I'll be completely <laughs> honest because I I don't really know. I've not even seen the film, but it's something like that. You, not it's a bit like a Candyman type thing where you say the name three times and Candyman comes out and kills you. And there's ones that um, Charlie Charlie. You put the the pencils on, and it's supposed to move. Um, have you not heard of that one? Only paranormal stuff. I say games. Um, I've just done a Ouija board a few times, um, but not really anything like Midnight Man or. I, I'll have to try and find out about Midnight Man in a minute. I play so, like Five Nights at Freddy's. That's scary. You are. Played Five Nights at Freddy's. What's Five Nights at Freddy's? That's it's a computer game. 
Yeah, but like you, I don't even, I don't think it's probably not even Panama. I don't know. It's like you're in like a security office, and you got you can watch the monitors of this building oh, yeah. that you're in, and then there's like things trying to come and get you. And you got to like keep watching them on the monitors, and it's quite scary to uh, play that sort of so it's game. That's from that. like midnight. Pickup. I'm just having a type up of Midnight Man rules whilst we, it's the midnight game. Um. Let's have a look. Nick says, well done on selling out the conference. Cheers, Nick. Yeah, yeah, that is... Four days away. That is a big shout. Um, That's really good. That is really good. And you've done it with a lot, quite a bit of time to spare. It's not like the day before or anything like that. You've done really well. So we've put it together in like just over two months. Yeah, that's amazing. Amazing. Here we go. Right. Instructions for Midnight Man. It must be exactly 12 a.m. when you begin performing the ritual, otherwise it won't work. You need a candle, piece of paper, a writing implement, matches, or a lighter, salt, a wooden door, and at least one drop of your own blood. If you're playing with multiple people, they will need their own of the aforementioned materials, and they will have to perform the steps below accordingly. You write your name. Uh, on a piece of paper and put at least one drop of blood on the paper allow it to soak turn off all the lights in the place you're going to do this go to your wooden door and place the paper with your name on it in front of the door now take out the candles and light it a candle and light it sorry place it on top of the paper knock on the door 22 times the hour must be 12 a.m upon the final knock then open the door, blow out the candle, and close the door. You have just allowed the midnight man to enter your house. That sounds shady as fuck. Immediately relight the candle, and this is where the game begins. <laughs> you you must now look around your now completely dark house with a lit candle in your hand. Your goal is to avoid the midnight man at all costs until 3.33 a.m. Should your candle ever go out... That means the midnight man is near you and you must relight your candle in the next 10 seconds. <laughs> Fuck. 3.33. It's funny you say 3.33 because Abby, if she's still here, she might say something in the comments that uh, keeps waking up at 3.33. Oh, shit. Uh, I'll have like, she send the screenshot, like, like this happened again. And she had a missed call today from her phone number and it was like, Oh, three, 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 something, three, three. And when he, like, when he answered it, there's no, like, no one there on the other, oh, yeah. <laughs> on the other end. She might comment if she's still listening to me, but yeah, it was basically three, 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 then I was like, oh my God. Uh, pretty mad. But yeah, that sounds, um, I mean, saying that I wouldn't do it, I probably would do it. I mean, I was running around the church seven times. <laughs> you did run to the church the other, the other week, so I'm up to <laughs> trying anything really. Although, I, what gets me is doing it in your own house. It's the kind of game you'd want to play at a friend's house. Yeah. <laughs> so if anything went horribly wrong, it's not in your house. And I think, like running around the church, you're kind of in, not in a safe area, but you're away from your own house. Yeah, it's like 250 miles away from my house. Exactly. So that's going to be have a, to have a committed spirit to come and get you. But um, yeah, I I don't know, I don't know if I play. It. So Abby's just put three, three, three haunting me, daytime, nighttime, every night. And Thomas has put I've played Midnight Man alone at work. Fucking hell! I work. How did he, he works twelve hour security night shifts in a haunted location, and has had some fun nights and scary nights playing a few games and running a spirit box. Nice. Uh, so Thomas, you've actually said that you have been to Devil's Coits as well. So you've been down to Whitney area. Um, are you fairly local? You've also said that you um, you work in a haunted location. Did you want to come on and have a chat to us about that haunted location? You're more than welcome to. There is a link in the... Uh, 
in the main sort of header of our post so you're more than welcome to come and join us Trudy's just put 333 in numerology signs and synchronicities come to us when we need guidance if our angels want to send us a message they will plant angel numbers around us the number 333 is one of the many angelic codes that they can send and it has a message that can change the world it's funny you should say about angel numbers Trudy because my um, eldest daughter she believes in angel numbers and she's always talking about angel numbers so and she's always talking about manifesting things that if you think about something enough that you can manifest it into real life so yeah I'm just waiting for her to manifest a lottery win but because <laughs> that would come in handy quite now ah oh, I didn't even do the lottery tonight that's just reminded me and that's annoying me. 100, well. yeah. 153 million yeah. Anyway. Well, if I win, I'll sorry, yeah. Yeah, please do. Out the three million, I'll do. <laughs> yeah, that'd, that'd be more than enough, mate. <laughs> do your podcast one time. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Um, Nick has just put playing games like this. I think you're inviting trouble, much like a, with a Ouija board. I don't think we should provoke spirits or entities in this way, especially when we don't fully understand it. True. There's a lot of people that won't play with a Ouija board just because of that reason. Um, it's interesting because I listen to a lot of podcasts about the paranormal, obviously, because um, it's very similar to what we do. And I, I, I was listening to podcasts for years. Um, I type in, there's, there's a subject I want to go on to in a minute, but I'll come back to that. Uh, Ouija boards. That's quite, uh, and it's actually an interesting story about how the Ouija boards were invented. Um, going back to like spiritual, uh, like the spiritualist movements, and the fact that um, they they used to tap out the alphabet. So like, they'd say A, and they'd go B, C, and they'd wait for this tap, and then they'd spell out a word. So there was no actual initial way of of having all that there was no letters on a board or anything like that and then somebody came up with this idea to put all the 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 letters and numbers on a board and created the Ouija board and then allegedly the the, the board spelled out Ouija as a its name um, they had this planchette thing as well and the the original guys that made it actually took it to the US patent office and to get a patent, you have to perf like show that your product worked, certainly back in the day. So the story goes that they got the Ouija board out and it spelled out the name of the guy at the patent office who they didn't know, allegedly. And he gave them a patent for it. So did you know that they, in America, it's actually still sold as a, a board game like by Hasbro I think it is yeah, I think Hasbro own it now don't it's like <laughs> and it was uh, it was uh, it was a way that they used to communicate with or believe they were communicating with the dead back in the day and it was only in 1973 that it took a, a sinister turn and that the Ouija board was identified as something for evil now, I don't know if you know what happened in 1973. I wasn't even born yet, and I know you weren't because you're younger than me. But something happened in 1973 which caused a, a shift change in the Ouija board. The Exorcist. Correct. Is that 1973? Yeah, 1973. Okay. And it was the Exorcist release that they... She uses a Ouija board in there. I think it's Mr. Howdy. I think that's the, the spirit she communicates with. And then she hits the fan basically and she's doing all sorts and spinning heads and vomiting and floating. And it's after that, at that point, that the Ouija board was took on this sinister and evil thing. Up until that point it was used as a like a, a, a like parlor a game. Yeah, it was it was it's actually a game that families used to use to communicate with the spirit world. No, it's like good. before it's like the internet and devil, yeah, not demons. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, so it, I listen to a lot of podcasts about the Ouija board history. It's, it's quite fascinating. Um, but yeah, 
So Ouija boards, I've not had a great deal of um, success or activity with them. Probably success, not the right word. Activity with them. Um, but yeah, very fa fascinates me. It fascinates me. I was get, always yeah. Get one Nick saying about like you don't know what mm. you're messing with. Uh, do you want to exactly. do you want to antagonize and do you want to think? But then the side of I mean, understand the point. But then the side of me that wants to try and capture some sort of evidence. I think to be able to get anything, you're going to have to draw them out. And if this is a way to draw them out, yeah, then is it worth the risk of? whatever could come after yeah because there was there are a set of rules for a ouija board as well they come yeah, with like a set of rules that's no uh, basically saying don't do it on your own that kind of thing make sure you close down the board afterwards by saying goodbye then you then you're sort of closing it so nothing else can come through um and having that second person with you is so that you don't so that somebody else is there should something go wrong basically <laughs> Because um, you might be talking to who you think is a dead relative, when in actual fact it could be something more sinister, pretending to be. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I do take on board what Nick's saying. It is a, it is one of those weird, weird things. I don't know if it's ever been, there's any sort of actual evidence that it works, but I don't know. Well, it's like anything, then it? it's. Uh... I used to have one, Nick, and um, so Nick's put down, I do agree, because in order to understand anything, you have to study it, but I just don't do it at my house. Absolutely. <laughs> I used to have a Ouija board, and I was not allowed it in the house, understandably, and then I sold it on eBay. <laughs> so somebody else can have that problem. Thomas um, said, I'd love to join you for a chat when you're thinking. Right now, Thomas. Yeah, right now. Journey, you can join us now. If you want to, you can come on and just chat about any you know, night yeah. shifts or whatever. Yeah, Book come two. and join us now. We could do have a nice, like a special guest. Come and join us. There, There is a link there. You just need to click. Anybody can just come and join us. We can make this into a group party if you like. Um, I tell us in. Mm -hmm. And we'll all be up on Facebook. Um, But yeah, no, seriously. Come, if anybody wants to jump on. So, Thomas, at the top of the post, there is a, a link. Trudy, your coffee table is a loud spirit board. How did I not even know that? How did I not know that? Right, I've just posted the link. You should just be able to <laughs> come and join us on that link. Whoever wants to join us. Should be in the opposite. Should, <laughs> should. This is the first time we're Zoom broadcasting to Facebook. Yes, Trudy. When we go to um, next week, if you need a lift there, I'll um, I'll come get you. Could show me the uh, the coffee table. I had that uh, Ozzy Osbourne one that um, the hillbilly hillbilly yes. horror podcast had in this room. Yeah, so we if anybody has listened to that episode, we've um we 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 obviously have our podcast recording on a similar medium to what you're seeing now. Uh so we can see the videos of each other plus our guest or guests depending on uh who's on. And um yeah, the, the Hillbilly Horror Stories guys, their husband and wife team and they they've got their studio and there's all sorts of horror stuff, including, as Ash just mentioned, Ozzy Osbourne's Ouija board. <laughs> and he's, never, he's never used it, though, has he? Cause it's, no, definitely it's, not. He had that it, his weird um, experience with Ouija yeah. when he was younger. Yeah, so that's, that's an interesting take on, on... I think that would freak me out. But uh, So he put... Anybody who's not listened to it should... But if you haven't, then uh, they were doing a Ouija board. He decided to leave the party, if I remember rightly. Yeah, he didn't want to do it. Uh, didn't want to do it. was being a bit of a bitch. And then he was by this dumpster and chucked the Ouija board in the dumpster. 
No, no, wait, wait, wait. It's oh, go before on. that, isn't it? Because so, yeah, he, so he gets in a bit of a mood. His girlfriend's being a bit, a bit. She wants to do this Ouija board. She's getting a bit drunk at the party, so he's like, doesn't want to get involved. So he just sort of leaves. Yes, then, that's it. Sorry, that might be an argument. And he takes his girlfriend home, mm-hmm. drops her off, and then as he's driving from her house to his house, he hears the scratching in the car. So he's yes, driving along, know. and he can't be. Really, think like maybe there's a branch under his tire or something that's making a scratching noise and there's a kmart which is like as there's something in it in america uh, a kmart a store so he pulls into the parking lot middle of the night i was looking around his car can't see any twigs or anything that's thought that would have caused his scratching noise gets back in the car and before he's even started moving he hears the same scratching noise and he looks and realizes that the ouija board box was left in his car so he goes and has a look at it, and as he opens the lid, the apparently he opens, takes the lid off, looks at the Ouija board, and the planchette spells out his name as he's looking at it. So he freaks out a bit, puts the lid back on, and throws the Ouija board into the dumpster in the Kmart parking lot. Drives home. Is it the same night? Or is it the next day? I think it's the next day. He Yeah. Yeah, he goes back, and the Ouija board's back in his car after throwing it in the dumpster at the Kmart somehow this was years and years ago this is probably what 40 years ago he said um, this is when he was a teenager and he's now like in his 50s um, and he never told anyone the story until a couple of years ago because he thought everyone's going to think he's bonkers um, it's, it just sounds like <laughs> an absolutely mad story that yeah. he, he threw it in the dumpster and then next day he's back in his car this Ouija board so he buries it in his dad's garden, he must have a big land. His dad, yeah, um, and buries it in his dad's back garden. It's been there ever since. It's been there for forty years. Yeah, so that's one. But he said, like, he's, just, he's always sweared off. I like, never ever doing a Ouija board, like, because he didn't even do the Ouija board himself. He like didn't want any, any part of it. But he had that experience and never done. But he has an Ozzy Osbourne one on display. That's never been, never <laughs> yeah. been used. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I don't know what. That is like something out of a horror film. No. Absolutely is. Yeah. <laughs> so Thomas is uh, downloading Zoom as we speak. So he will be on to join us shortly. So um, one of the topics I wanted to get on to as well um, was poltergeists. So it's something that directly or indirectly we've been talking about recently yeah. uh it's strange how things have come in sort of waves of uh subjects because we were we were talking to people about reincarnation and we spoke to a few people about afterlife yeah, on the bounce we've... about having any prior knowledge of what we're going to talk about absolutely absolutely and for those the, the those of you that listen to our podcast sometimes um we we're, we're quite well in advance and we know exactly what we're going to talk about like the, the the next week the week after and then sometimes we're waiting on people to come back to us and it, it's a short time scale for us to to organize and release the podcast and at that point we it was on the it was like three on the bounce where we were talking about reincarnation uh the afterlife uh and they were all unrelated people and it was Crazy, and then we've had poltergeist ones recently, where we've been talking about the Battersea poltergeist, we talk about the Enfield poltergeist. Um, Strangely enough, um, so today actually is either today or yesterday. I was I found I don't know how I found it because like though I am pretty interested in paranormal, it's not just my duty. Especially at the minute, I'm just bogged down with your whole conference stuff. But somehow I came onto an article. And do you know the name Alma Fielding? Alma Fielding, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I came across an article about her, um, which is a poltergeist. And for the life of me, I can't think of which of the famous ones is it. I reckon I know the name, and I can't. You put That's another London, now. another London um, poltergeist from the nineteen forties. Mm-hmm. I have heard when so when I was looking into the Battersea Poltergeist, that was one of the names that had come up. That's where I remember it from. 
I'm a field in, yeah. I have heard the name. It's a bit like just randomly, if it, even this morning, not days, but I'm into one at the minute. As this morning or last night, as randomly came in this article and the portuguese of found my field in. And I was like, another portuguese. I mean, he just mentioned it then, just reminded me then. Mm. Uh, so just got it back up in the article I was reading in the history. And uh, it's got to do another episode on this one. Yeah. The Japanese are quite popular, the portuguese. Yeah, uh, people, do, people do enjoy them. Uh, which is which is obviously great, um, and it is a fascinating subject, and it's one of those ones where they, like we've we discussed with the the Batsy one, that there there appears to be a um, a connection between the people who live in the house and the spirit. So it's usually a, uh, a girl, a pubescent or a pubescent age girl. She's going through puberty, that type of age range. And it all starts with like knocking sounds or sounds in the wall and then escalates up. And in the case of the Batsy Poltergeist, this Poltergeist was sending notes and letters to her and her family. And even when she moved out, they were still sending letters. It was still sending letters to the parents. And then one, one final one was like goodbye, that kind of thing. It was just like... It's it's just weird, 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 weird. Um, and again, like this one, um, nineteen thirty-eight, it started. It's like a long, time, yeah. Like, and you, th- yeah, and you think a lot of these ones are all pre-internet. There wouldn't have really been a way that they could have really known about. So back in the day, if you wanted to research something. You you had to go to a library and try and find it, and if there wasn't a book written on it, you couldn't find you like you couldn't find out anything. Um, I mean, even in my day, I mean, I'm not that old, uh, but like I remember in, in school, we had to do like in Carter and and stuff. It was like yeah, yeah, in Carter encyclopedias yeah. and stuff to get any it's, information. Encyclopedia Britannica. Yeah, that's where information came from. Like. That's, that's what research was, getting an encyclopedia. Yeah, it was. It was. I'll go down to the library and get a book out. And even before the internet, they used to have a Britannica encyclopedia things on a CD-ROM, so you could you could search it. So Trudy supposed that she would love to experience Poltergeist TV. I think it'd be insanely amazing, but not in her own home, obviously. <laughs> Same. I don't think I would either, Trudy. So, right, so we have... Thomas in the waiting room. I will bring him in. Um, so if anybody else wants to join in, by all means, click on the link. And if you haven't got Zoom, download it. If you have got Zoom, pop on in. Let's have a group chat about it. anything and everything. Hello, Thomas. Hello. Can you hear us, Thomas? I can't see a microphone symbol, so I don't know if you can. If you got a microphone, nope. We'll keep chatting then while we're waiting for Thomas to join us. Um, Austin than ever. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, the the pot ghost activity. Uh, where do we get to? Sorry, I completely lost my train of thought there. <laughs> um, it's about Trudy exper- experiencing it. Yeah, so yeah, Trudy would love to experience power pot ghost activity. I think pot are. Uh, it was one of the weirdest things, and one of the first initial things that got me interested in the paranormal was the. I think it was actually the Enfield pot ghost case when it was on. Um, Arthur C. Clarke's World of what's World of Strange World or World, Mysterious of, yeah, Mysterious World, and um, yeah, it was it was something that just fascinated me and because it was in a house like a normal house. It wasn't like an old castle or a really old building or this like Freddy Krueger type house or anything like that or Amityville type house. It was like a proper. I know Amityville was a 
his own house. But it wasn't like a residential road in the UK. And they were showing things being thrown at windows. And it's just insane. I just... It was mad as yeah. hell. It's mad as hell. Um, and I, I think it's just such a fascinating thing that it, it's got these direct um, sort of sequence of, of events that seems to happen when you're um, when it starts with knocking noises right up to to speaking and violence, typically objects being thrown. Um, <laughs> Pursuit of the Paranormal with Ash and Greg. 